with nature and in touch with your body like you can broke it what's up y'all and welcome back to my channel so first i just want to say thank you to everyone who um felt love respected sent well wishes on my news that I'm sharing. It's definitely the most beautiful, sacred, um, intimate experience I've ever experienced in my whole life. Um, but it's also something that was the most beautiful time in my life where I feel completely called to share my experience in hopes, not even in hopes, but in faith that um, other women, other families, will take the initiative to advocate for themselves and also have the birth that they want. Um, yes, so I'll save this all for another video, but in this video, I wanted to share some of the videos that I watched during my pregnancy that helped me either mentally, physically, or just spiritually prepare, whether that gave me ideas of what I should do um, throughout my pregnancy journey, um, educating me, or just affirming some of the things that I was already thinking. Um, yeah, this is a compilation of different women who shared their stories, which I'm so grateful for. Uh, women who normalize this uh, traditional birth practice that now isn't so normal. Okay, we're gonna quickly show you guys how we take care of our placenta. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you just never know how you're gonna feel either. Like, do you wanna be squatting? Do you wanna be in the bath? Do you want to be outside the bed? Um, yeah, so let me just go ahead and just jump right into the video. If it's not ideal to necessarily go on YouTube and watch positive birth stories, another thing that you can do that I found very helpful is listen to audiobooks. Listening to audiobooks about birth and or just about self-love and the power of um, the mind and what you can do when you train your mind to manifest a certain outcome. Audible has a range of different audiobooks that you can listen to that I listened to during my birth process that was very helpful. If you guys have not tried Audible for yourself and you guys would like to, you guys can try Audible for free within the first 30 days by going to www.audible.com slash findguru or texting findguru to 500-500. Okay, so my girl Wonderful Acts is like watching your homegirl on the other screen like i loved her energy um she talked about a lot she had a hospital birth um, and she talked about kind of like the epiphanies that she was getting and the guidance that she was getting from god which i really liked um so many women are scared to advocate for themselves in the hospital and some people don't even know that they can i also like how she explained her perception of c-section and epidurals and how Medication can lead into more intervention and more intervention and then lead you into having a c-section But I just really love how she just overall advocated for herself So let's go ahead and check out her birthing experience My goal by the grace of God was to have a natural labor no c-section no epidural Actually, I wanted a supernatural labor me and my husband were praying and believing God to have a pain-free labor Because pain is underneath the curse and the curse is set free by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah that's what we were praying for. We were praying for our doctors. We were praying for the hospital. We were praying for the staff. I was reading a book called Supernatural Childbirth Book Plug. I'll link it below. And we were speaking confessionals by faith and just believing God to have a healthy mom, healthy baby, all natural, supernatural delivery, y'all. Like, y'all wanna have a natural vaginal birth. And people were like, well, you know, if the baby's too big, blah, 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 blah. But I was like, yo, God is good. God knows what time she's supposed to be born. The doctors can give you one due date. But at the end of the day, God knows the date that he has predestined for my baby to be born. So I was patiently waiting by the grace of God. So that night, basically what that means, my service was thinning, which was a good thing because you wanted to get to 100% and the baby to come out. So I'm like, all right. So I'm like, well, let me go back home so I can finish dilating at home. And she's like, no, once your water breaks, you're stuck here at the hospital. 
Oh, so I'm like, all right. So they moved me to the delivery room. I got to the delivery room around 7 a.m. My doctor was not at the hospital yet. She was on, uh, so there was a different doctor on call and the nurses are there. Uh, side note, for those of you who are pregnant about to have a baby, just know that the nurses and the doctors do pretty much nothing. No, I mean, I'm not gonna say that, but they really just check you into the room and leave you there. Like you're just there to labor by yourself. It was finally, I'm like, okay, I need to get up. We gotta get this baby out, let's go. So me, my spiritual doula and my husband, we're like jamming, we're pumping Anthony Brown music. His album is dope, check it out. We're like worshiping God, praising. All of a sudden, I was like, oh, I can't do this. <laughs> I was like, in my head, I didn't say that loud, but in my head, I was like, yo, I completely understand why women get epidurals. Give me a shot. You're telling me one shot could take away this pain and it be done? Why go through this? But I also knew um, from what I learned through, through my birth classes and just research is that if you get an epidural, you're more than likely to have a C-section because epidurals are drugs. It can slow down your heart rate, slow down the baby's heart rate, and it can cause complications. Doctors say, uh-oh baby's heart rate is dropping and then they'll want to cut you open and give you a c-section no judgment to any women who have had epidurals or had c-sections because when i tell y'all i was like this close i understand but i was really believing god that we were going to be able to do it and do it you know naturally oh another thing when you're in labor laying flat on your back like you see in the movies is the worst position for labor because you want gravity to help push the baby out so the best thing to do is to walk it's to stand it's to squat it's to be active and at this point i wasn't active because i was in so much pain i could barely stand up after they found out it was meconium they were like okay let's get you on the fetal heart rate monitoring because sometimes when you pass meconium that could mean the baby's in distress so they put the heart rate on me and I'm trying to sit on my birth ball you know trying to stay in there and they put the monitor on me and because of the way that I was sitting I promise you the way I was sitting on the on the monitor it was like the heart rate wasn't steady so normally her heart rate was reading at like 141 or something like that and now it was going 141 52 78 95 141 183 132 so it was basically fluctuating it wasn't like a steadily decline it was just fluctuating because it couldn't get a good read the way that i was sitting so then the nurse is like oh no get her on the bed get her on the bed so they like put me on the bed all of a sudden they rush over an oxygen mask to me and they put oxygen on me and then they stick an IV in my arm in my right arm so i'm like laying flat in the bed oxygen mask IV in my arm and i'm like what just happened all of a sudden i feel like a sick patient in the hospital not like a healthy woman about to have a baby so i'm laying in the bed and finally my doctor comes praise god y'all this woman we found out later ended up canceling all of her appointments in in her office just to come help me deliver my baby that is favor from god the most high and she was not a christian or anything a middle eastern woman a lovely woman who came in and was like y'all gonna help her because the hospital was not trying to have me get a, give a natural birth and she was like i want her to have the birthing experience and then had to get an epidural because the pain got so bad and the pain is supposed to get worse as you get closer to to the birth and i'm like if i am am, am crying like a baby at four there is no way that i can make it to 10 if my friend had to tap out at eight like i'm about to tap out now and i could feel my stomach that my baby had still not dropped like she was still sitting really high in my stomach and the baby has to drop into the pelvic area before the birth and i'm like at this rate i gotta get an epidural and if I get an epidural, more than likely, I'm probably gonna have a C-section because the baby's still sitting high. And when you're laying flat in the bed, like I said, it's not giving the baby room to drop because you're not able to like walk around and use gravity. So I finally looked to my husband and I'm like, I can't do this. And that was the first time that I said it out of my mouth. But then God, but then God. So literally, I sense the Holy Spirit tell me, Alyssa, you have to labor. Labor is an active word. You have to participate. Like you have to participate in what I'm doing. You can't just lay here. Like I couldn't just lay there and let the baby come out. It was like, no, you need to get up, you need to labor. Faith without works is dead. We are called to be co-laborers with Christ. And literally like all these scriptures just came to my mind about how God literally like uses man in order to see the supernatural things happen on the earth. Like with Moses parting the Red Sea, Moses had to lift up his staff and then God parted the sea. And there's just so many stories about God who steps in to intervene when our works match up with our faith. So literally I told my husband, I was like, look, I can't do this, but I gotta get up. 
I gotta get out the bed. I got to labor. Like I have to. I was like, it was just like this, this Holy Spirit conviction. Like I have to get up. I have to labor. So we call the nurse in and we're like, nurse, I gotta get out this bed. The nurse is like, oh no, baby's in distress. Woo woo. I'm like, go call my doctor. <laughs> so the doctor comes in. I'm like, doctor, I have to get out the bed. I have to labor. My doctor's like, okay. So she, we found out later, goes and tells the nurse to take a lunch break. She comes back in and she's like, okay, get her out the bed, get her out the bed. So my husband, my friend, they help get me out the bed. I'm sitting on the birth ball for like, probably like 15 minutes. And then I switch positions and I get on all fours. And I'm like using the birth ball, like um, like propped up. I'm like laying on it like this. Um, but I'm like on all fours on the birth ball. And literally as soon as I got into that position, it was like my contractions went from zero to 10. And I know I said they were already painful. The crazy thing is that they weren't, they were actually less painful, but they just increased in intensity. It was like I felt them go through my whole body. Like I literally was like, whoa, like what was that? And at this point, my husband is massaging my back and the massaging helped kind of like counteract the pain of the contractions. And literally my husband said I was down there for less than 15 minutes. All of a sudden I feel this burning sensation down there. And I'm like, and I had heard people say that when the baby's head is crowning, it's like a ring of fire if they had hair. And we knew that she had hair based on our ultrasounds. So I was like, is the baby's head there? And my husband said, he looked real quick and was like, no. And then my other friend looked and she was like, yes, the baby's head is there. This is where we go into shock mode. Cause I was just on the bed, just at four centimeters. Like in my mind, it felt like 30 minutes ago, you know? So I pushed one time and the baby just slides on out. Not kidding. <laughs> Glory be to God. And the crazy thing is, this is why it was the Lord and not just any supernatural act. When my doctor had, had tested me and was like, oh, you're only four centimeters. That's when my friend and my husband went into supernatural prayer mode and were like, Father God, we pray that Alyssa dilates quickly in Jesus name. This will not be a long labor that she dilates supernaturally. I went from four centimeters to 10 centimeters and having a baby in one hour and 35 minutes, y'all. That does not happen. In an hour and a half, I went from four to 10 and pushing on a baby when it took me Thursday to Monday morning at noon to go two centimeters. Now, Legacy Birth is one of the last videos I watched. And unfortunately, this video was super hard for me to find. Um, but when I found it, it was a gym. I at first was looking at her like, sis, there's no way that she can be like this giddy. But after I had to step out of myself and what I've seen in the media, I was like, you know what? I'm going to channel all of this energy because she was cooking for her sons. She was making a smoothie. She was singing. She was dancing and she was just enjoying her birthing process. And she showed how she took care of the placenta after birth. Well, I'm happy that I actually finished my makeup and my hair in time because now my contractions are a lot closer together. Uh, I'm going to start timing them again and I'm just going to go about the day like, like it's normal. Basically, whenever I get a contraction, I say, the first thing I say is yes, another contraction. Because you change the way your mind is accepting that new feeling that's about to come. And then what I say is, oh, this feels so good. Because believe it or not, birth is actually using oxytocin. While you're in labor, your body is going through, your body is pumping loads of oxytocin. And oxytocin is a feel-good hormone. So labor is actually designed to feel good. Right now I'm getting a contraction and I'm going to say, yes, another contraction and bring me closer to my baby. And then it's like, oh, it feels so good. And the minute I tell my body that it feels good, so, we're going to be making like some kale smoothies so that I can have like lots of energy, lots of iron. And the reason why I chose kale smoothies is it's important to give your body energy because the more energy it has and the less tired it is, the better you can perform and the less, and the less painful you can trap you. Some of the tips that I use while I'm in labor 
Okay, so the first thing is media's first perception, which is what I call MVP. And the reason why I'm able to birth in such a happy and pleasant manner is because I've rid myself of MVP. And MVP is media's birth perception. Getting a contraction. So I'm just gonna watch my video. Media is birth perception, so you constantly see birth being perceived in movies as women screaming, women lying on their back, mommy. Yeah, women in distress, and you've taken those images and you feel like that's what real birth is, but there is another way to give birth, and just like how I do it, it's a nice positive way, and a beautiful way, and a calm way, and a natural way. And as long as you keep those images in your mind, you can read yourself with MVP. And to do that, you just basically have to stop watching things like that. And you have to start watching things that are more positive births. So you can watch my births. You can watch positive births online. Um, and that's definitely going to help you. So I'm just broke. And nobody knows yet. I didn't tell anybody, I didn't want to go to the clinic because I want to have a free birth. And if I tell everybody, then I'm going to call me the wife. And I'm going to go and I'm just going to have to Don't be ripped in a trip day. Call me the mess of it all. How we take care of our placenta. Okay. okay. It's okay, I don't need it anymore. Just put it. You put it on lukewarm water. If the camera dies, we'll, try to, we'll do the video on Travis' phone. Now, as you guys can see, there's still blood in the cells. These cells are what transfer the food to the baby. There's still blood in there, so you don't want to cut the cord right away because your baby's still receiving nutrients. Now, this next compilation, this birth story was like the best. I love this birth story, and actually, we were watching this birth story when we were like chilling one day and we were just like man like she is exuding divine powerful feminine energy the way she like walked up after she gave birth and I feel a little um I feel indifferent about sharing um showing them giving birth because I feel like that's very um intimate so you guys can go to their page and watch it um but I loved that they had like a very family um, I really also love, I also love that they share the intimacy of having a midwife. Midwifery is definitely a one-on-one, -on -one, not a one-on-one, -on -one, but a one-on family type of experience, depending on who is your birthing partner, how your family environment is. But in this, in these clips, you can see that their midwives were very hands-on with them. They weren't going in a hospital and no disrespect for people who, um, go to the hospital if that's what resonates with you but i really loved how it showed instead of going to hospital and your doctor potentially not being there or somebody being on call or you dealing with a nurse who you don't know or somebody who's rude somebody who's busy or somebody who's under stress you're dealing with the same people the same team and they give you one-on-one -on -one treatment um they like they're massaging her explaining to her and they're teaching her about her body and that's one thing that I loved about my midwife because she taught me so much. So in these clips, you're going to be able to see um, kind of the midwife experience for some people. And I also love how she was like, we were using protection and then boom, gender reveal. And I also wanted to share this clip because they said she was going to have to have a C-section and she was like, well, my perception, this is my perception, but my perception was like, nah, I'm not having it. And she took, she walked her her and her partner took a leap of faith and said that they could put this into their own hands and they had a natural, beautiful home birth. And I think so many women um, get defeated or they're in fear because somebody tells them one thing, you have to get a C-section, you have to do that without advocating for themselves or not knowing how to further educate themselves or without wanting to seek um, a second opinion. So I really love their birth story and I shared a lot and I'm talking a lot, but let's just go ahead and watch it. I called my sister over and asked her to bring me something. I'm sure you guys already know what that is. You know, me and babe have been being so careful y'all by the way. Yeah! 
So we wanted to officially announce that we are going to be doing a home water bird. I'm so I'm excited. We met up with them. Asked a bunch of questions. They love us. I your pictures online and stuff with some of your birds. How you feel, baby? Good. Excited. Great. One ten over sixty-eight. This may sound weird, yeah. but I thought you guys how you figure out how the baby is. I thought y'all put y'all hand up the women and feel. All right. So what I'm feeling for right here is the head. Oh, you can feel it. Mm -hmm. oh. So the head's right here, kind of feels like a ball, and it probably feels uncomfortable. So now what I'm feeling for is feeling for back. I wonder how big he is. One, my first baby was six, the other one was six pounds and six ounces. You don't look like you're growing a huge baby. So what's this that's always sitting here? There's a little foot, it's making that known. Is that what you're talking about over here? Something just really hard. This is, I'm chasing a foot right now. He's moving it all around over here. Yeah, I got 34 and a half, so that's good. So what is that, dude? It's like a knuckle thing? Yes, vibration percussion type concept. It does it at a consistent rate and allows the blood flow to uh, increase and get endorphins going. Deep breath. All the way up. Ooh. Oh, okay, all right? Yeah. basically was telling me that um it is possible that I may have to have a c-section during my third pregnancy so if you guys did not know with Melanie and Milan they were both they, they both were vaginal but this one may be a c-section just because the placenta is really low right now it's and below the baby yeah and it's supposed to always be above the baby so within the next month or two they're gonna be um, watching me and stuff we are gonna pray for the best because Again, I do not want to have a C-section. Like I said earlier, I don't like to add kids in um, my YouTube videos because I feel like that's intimate and they put that on their channel, so go watch it there. But it was really hard to cut the children out because one thing that I loved about this birth story, the passion fruit parents, is their kids were so involved in the process and I also loved how they kept asking questions um questions that were a little alarming for some people but they answered them with love and explained and, and my perception was like this is natural kids can ask questions um mama is going through her surges and she's eating them like she her and her kids are there watching and witnessing how powerful um their mom is in this birthing process and their kids are hilarious and one a baby girl is like mommy you're not calm you said you were gonna be calm and i thought that was hilarious because even though this is such a liberating experience and you have kids there like kids are gonna be kids so i love this experience and um yeah let's go ahead and get to watching this one Uh, hey, hey, this is calm. Uh, this one. 
get up with your hand on there and see if you can feel anything. You can go in the shower. Oh, right, number one. I don't want to go in the shower. Come back a bit. It's all breathe with my breath. Breathe in, breathe out. Side breathe in. Breathe in. Okay, thanks. Sorry, I'm asking if I'm okay. I just need a little break. Yeah. You hot? Do you want the window open? No. Okay. Don't panic, okay? No, I'm not panicking. I'm worried about you. I'm worried about me. <laughs> I'm all good. I know you got this, okay? was like yo the negativity that was brought on to us was so unnecessary and so intrusive because when i'm telling you even though my pregnancy was private um just the unsolicited opinions were a little bit too much for me where i was like you know what i don't want to tell nobody because i'm doing something that a lot of people think is foreign but it's something that's natural to me and it resonates with me and what i believe and sometimes when you allow other people into that sacred space because for me i was an emotional um, intuitive sponge where I really really like my empathetic nature really took over in pregnancy where I just had to block out anybody um, its opinions and people would come with good intent I love that they share that this was their experience as well and they just blocked it out and that's how they overcame it I feel like as soon as you tell someone you're pregnant or having a baby they just come with their um they share their experiences and opinions. And, and opinions. Yeah. <laughs> lots and lots and lots and lots of opinions. Yeah. Um, and that can be challenging. Misleading. Misleading, yeah, if you yeah. if you um, accept them. Yeah, because like, I, to mm -hmm. be honest, like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of like, negative opinions more than Probably. positive, yeah. yeah. And yeah. negative experiences more yeah, than more, positive yeah. that people share. They're very rare. They're very, it's very rare to find people who are going to just share like their positive opinions and then bringing in a little negative in it. Right, so. right. Just the mind aspect of it and um, just keeping, yeah, that mental focus that this is something that God, God created my body to do this. I don't have any reason to fear. Like I can just, you know, embrace what's going on and enjoy the experience. I was just playing this uh, supernatural childbirth playlist and another uh, playlist that I found on YouTube and I'll link information to that in the description below. But it was just to keep like the whole entire atmosphere which is so peaceful and 
it was just a great atmosphere for me to be like in labor because I was in labor. I mean, I didn't know it because I really wasn't experiencing that, the pain that I hear, you know, other people talk about uh, for those hours from like 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. I was just coasting and I was just like in my zone and it was just such an amazing experience. So Simply Jade 101 um, has a few videos that I really loved, but I love these tip videos because she talks about one, having a very good mindset. She talks about physically, mentally, spiritually preparing. And one thing that I definitely, she definitely encouraged me to do was research on chiropractor. I did see a chiropractor at the end of my pregnancy and it was one of the most helpful experience for my body because when you think about it, if your body is not in alignment and your vaginal canal is supposed to be like a narrow path for your baby to go down. If you're not in alignment with your body, how is the baby gonna move freely, naturally, and easy and effortlessly? If you are not willing to kind of go deep, reflect, um, and do a lot of preparation from the inside, then this ain't the video for you. Birth is really like the culmination of your pregnancy. If you, throughout your pregnancy, like you just didn't slow down for a second to even like, to even think about like this, this amazing thing that's happening inside your body. If you're just like ripping and running and going from one thing to the next and like, just not taking a second to just breathe, like focus in on yourself, on your body, then birth is going to be difficult for you. Um, that's just kind of how it goes. Number two, chiropractic adjustments. I went to the chiropractor starting at around 36, 37 weeks. I went maybe two or three times a week. And it was like a quick 15 minute session where he would just help to align my body, which in turn helped to align the baby in the womb. And I wasn't initially going to the chiropractor for this reason. I had like really, really bad pelvic pain because of where my daughter was positioned in the womb she just like sat right on top of my pelvis so it made like it pretty much made it where i couldn't walk because i was in so much pain so i was going to the chiropractor for that and then like afterwards when i started doing research i realized like how effective chiropractic adjustments can be when you are pregnant i'm gl so glad that i went to him because not only did it help my pelvis but it did help to get the baby in alignment and like i said i had her at home Nobody was prepared for that. God forbid if she wasn't in the right position um, to be able to like come through the birth canal, then it would have been, you know, this story would have, could have been different. So the reason that my birth, that it was so easy for her to just come on out is because she was in alignment. So chiropractic adjustments definitely help with that. All those other things I was doing, taking teas and sitting on bars, like those things are great and they are needed, but more importantly is your mindset like when you are getting ready to have a baby it's one of those things that nobody can help you but you and nobody can push that baby out but you well you and the baby are working together um so i did a lot of breathing exercises a lot of guided meditations a lot of visualizations and i even did something called hypnobirth which I didn't use when I was having her, but they're just like hip hypnosis through meditations all centered around birth. You can look it up on YouTube, but I did all of that throughout my pregnancy and definitely focused on it like that last month, just getting, getting my mindset ready for birth. Positive thinking and watching positive birth stories on YouTube. So there are there are so many stories that we've heard about women having birth that obviously scares us. And I made it a point from the first day I found out I was pregnant to, to not watch or engage in any conversations or listen to any stories that were kind of the opposite of what I wanted to experience, right? Law of attraction. So if I know I wanted um, a a smooth birth, an easy birth, a short birth, a quote unquote painless birth, then I didn't watch YouTube videos of women that were like, oh my God, this is so hard. I hate myself. Why did I do this? Da, 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 da. Like those thoughts might come up when you're giving birth, but I didn't, I didn't like to watch videos or stories 
that focus on like how hard birth is or how difficult birth is or how so, like none of that you know our bodies are designed to do this and though there are you know many times where we might run into um you know a few roadblocks or uh things that might not allow the birth to go exactly how we wanted it to just remember that remind yourself that you were made for this like that you can do this and any fears that you may have surrounding birth, you really wanna to try to tackle those as early on in your pregnancy as you can so that you can manifest the birth that you want. I really like Shine With Plants' birth story because she showed her experience through her birthing process. And this was one of the first videos I watched where I kind of saw what a midwife actually does in the birthing process. So I stopped everything I was trying to do and I took a shower and it felt so much better <laughs> just while I was taking the shower. I got out of the shower and it got to the next level. <laughs> the midwives um, arrived at home and you know, was, I was still able to talk in between my contractions. So the midwives were here, they were just getting everything ready for birth. And then one of them came to check me. She just needed to know how far I was. And she asked me if I wanted to know. I told her that I didn't want to know. As she was doing it, she said, baby is very low. And I was like, okay. After labor, they told me how far I was at that time. And you guys, I was eight centimeters dilated. And I remember after she checked me, she talked to Arnold and he came to me. He was trying to uh, fill up the birth pool. And I think he just stopped everything he was doing because I was asking for him. I needed him by my side the whole time now. And it was getting so intense. And I remember he came to me, he was like, honey, you're doing so great. But I could see in his look that I was very fine, <laughs> you know. So well, wow. you're doing so great. Yes, you're doing great. Drinking some water, coconut water. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, so good. Uh, let's, yeah, she may not be able to drink too much, so let's her get whatever she can get. Maybe more. Oh, thank you so much. Got it. From the Millennial Bride, I really loved her story because she has experienced hospital birth in what she says to be a painful, unpleasant experience as far as the way she was feeling, or at least my perception of what she was saying. And then she then transitioned into having a supernatural experience with her second child where she had a night and day experience. We did have a home birth and we had a very fast delivery. We had a supernatural childbirth and this is something that we prayed and believed God for and this is something that he came through on. So I wanted to record this video because I want to say that God is no respecter of persons. If God can do it for me, he can also do it for you. I just want to encourage anybody in this video who is pregnant or who are trying to get pregnant. So I stumbled across a book called Supernatural Childbirth by Jackie Mize when I was pregnant. This is a book that talks about how as women of God we can experience pain-free labor but I had never met anybody who had ever experienced a pain-free birth or heard of anyone who experienced a pain-free birth. I have been programmed by society like most of us to see birth as one of the most painful, excruciating things that you could ever experience and not only had I been programmed by society, I also had experienced birth before with my two-year-old toddler Jaden and it was definitely a day and night experience. So I do want to say that before this point I never considered a home birth in my life. I I had a hospital birth with Jaden, which I saw as a traditional way to have a child. And because I had some bleeding after I had Jaden, which was very scary, a home birth did not even cross my mind because I wanted to make sure that I was in a hospital where I could be taken care of pray for the specific things that I wanted in a birth and also just I would speak over my body. This is not something that I told everybody. We were very selective with who we talked about it with. We really needed to grow our faith in this area. 
and I was still in denial. I remember being four centimeters dilated with Jaden, just an unbearable pain, not feeling like I could go any longer, having to get an epidural, feeling like my back, it was just the most intense back labor. And here I am, and she says that I'm five centimeters dilated and I am not having that experience. And it was honestly, I could not believe what was happening. Like I know what I believed God for, but it was just all panning out in front of me and it was just it was unbelievable so I continue to just like labor in the tub um, at this point there was in this in my labor there was no noise um, there was no yelling it was just calm peace so there was no screaming I had not made a peep since I had gone into labor um, it was everything that we had prayed for I believe the Holy Spirit just took over my body and I remember like leaning back, but I remember just like, I remember like groaning in tongues and I felt the water break and his head and his shoulder, everything just came, just slipped right out. Um, and I remember not experiencing the ring of fire, which I thought I was going to experience. Um, and it was just such an amazing, experience and it was something um that i can't exp sitting down and explaining it to you guys does not even give the experience justice it was so amazing and so life-changing to um stand in agreement with your husband awesome this was one of the biggest things we ever stood in agreement on together and to see it come to pass really strengthened our faith i just want to encourage anybody who may be having a trouble getting pregnant or who's pregnant right now and I want to let you know that you do not have to receive um, anything that the world tries to put on you or what they try to tell you I do want to say I got attacked so much coming up to this birth so much so that the enemy was telling me you haven't even been spending time with God you are not going to experience the labor and delivery that you have been praying for but one thing I told myself is I know that the power of life and death is in our tongue and I would not come into agreement with the lies that I was hearing. So though I was hearing it, I was declaring and I was believing the word of God that he was going to come through even when I didn't feel like he was going to come through. And All right, y'all. So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I pray that you find these videos helpful because it was definitely a struggle for me to find these women on YouTube. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop them down below. I'm thinking about doing a Q&A, but I'm definitely going to be sharing more of my birthing process. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you in the next upload.